Chicken breast gets a really bad rap, which does make sense because it tends to be dry and kind of flavorless. But it does not have to be that way, and I'm going to prove this with the power of barbecue. So what is a chicken breast? Well, it's a chicken titty. And what is a cow breast? A cow titty. And for those of you who don't know, a cow breast is also called a brisket. And if you've never tried a brisket before, it's pretty much widely accepted as the best barbecue item on any barbecue joints menu. So with this logic, I wanna cook a chicken breast like a brisket to try and make something incredible. Now, obviously a chicken and a cow are two completely different animals. So it wouldn't make much sense to cook a chicken breast to 200 degrees internal and then rest it overnight, just like a brisket. I promise if you try this at home, you're gonna end up with a brisket as dry as a rice cake. And the main reason why this would happen is because briskets have two things that chicken breasts don't. The first one is a vast amount of intramuscular fat or marbling, and the second is a vast amount of connective tissue. These two things allow a brisket to be cooked low and slow and stay moist because of the breakdown of these tissues and fats. Sexy Kana Barbecue has an incredible video on this subject, and I highly recommend you watch it. He explains the process of fat rendering, collagen breakdown, and so much more in regard to cooking brisket. And I will have a link to that video in the description box, and make sure to also subscribe to his channel because the amount and quality of content on his channel compared to how much exposure he gets, it just doesn't make any sense. So the question is, why do chicken breasts have little to no intramuscular fat? Well, I honestly don't know the answer to that question. I think that chickens are just a much leaner animal in comparison to a beef. But in terms of the connective tissue, I think that this difference can be explained if we consider the life of a chicken versus a beef. Farm-raised chickens peck things off of the ground, they lay eggs, and generally just strut around the yard. They don't really use their wings, and as a result, their breast muscles are underutilized. However, a cow stands for the majority of its life, and a cow weighs like a ton, so it's basically carrying half of its weight on its front legs and ultimately on those chest muscles in the front. It's similar to holding a barbell at the top of a bench press, except it's for the cow's entire life. This results in big, tough chest muscles with a lot of connective tissue. I think. Again, I'm always gonna bring you barbecue bro science, so if any of you have the knowledge to deny or confirm my claims, I'd really appreciate it if you let me know in the comment section. But anyways, although the chicken doesn't have much intramuscular fat, I can fix that problem with this injector. So I melted down some Wagyu beef tallow and injected it all up in this breast and we are left with this beautiful pseudo marbled chicken breast. Now in terms of the connective tissue, I have no solution to substitute this. And just FYI, the connective tissue is the reason why you would even cook a brisket remotely close to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Because the connective tissue softens and turns into gelatin when it reaches 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's another tidbit I learned from Texicana Barbecue's video. And as such, because there is no connective tissue in this breast to keep it moist, we are not even gonna get close to an internal of 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Now in observing this injected chicken breast, because it doesn't have a lot of connective tissue, if we're still comparing it to beef, it's a lot less like a brisket and a lot more like a steak. So I think we should cook it like a steak. So I'm gonna season this breast with pepper and salt. Then I'm gonna reverse sear this chicken by smoking it at 300 degrees Fahrenheit until it reaches an internal of 130 degrees and then sear it until it hits an internal temp of about 145 degrees Fahrenheit. It'll carry over to 150 and then I'll hold it there for a few minutes in my warmed oven. You heard that right. I am not cooking these chicken breasts to 165 and no, I am not gonna get salmonella poisoning. I watched a smoked turkey breast video from Dave from Wilson's Barbecue, and in it, he explained that if you cook poultry to 150 degrees and then hold it for at least three minutes, it will be just as safe to consume as if you cooked it at 165. And that segues beautifully into our second method for cooking chicken breast, which is cooking it like a turkey breast. So there's really not much of a stretch here, especially if you compare this method to the first chicken breast that I cooked, because chicken and turkey are both poultry. But because of this, I assume that this is gonna work really well. And smoked turkey is so incredibly delicious. I am not joking when I say that when done right, turkey is one of my favorite things to order at a barbecue joint. So I do not have a doubt in my mind that this chicken breast is gonna come out absolutely amazing. And I will be using two separate smoked turkey techniques. The first being the aforementioned Wilson's barbecue method. So he starts his chicken out by brining it in a salt water solution for 24 hours. 
and once it's been brined, he seasons it with pepper and it's ready for the smoker. And for the other breast, I'm gonna be using Johnny, AKA Jerby Barbecue's method for turkey. So in Jerby's video, he does not brine his breast. Instead, he slathers it in mayo to act as a binder. Then the seasoning goes on. And for today, I will be starting with a coat of pepper, and then I will be using Voodoo Rub for Meat Church. And again, this breast was not brined, so I'm gonna put a pretty good coat of seasoning on it. Then both of these breasts are going on my offset at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And midway through the cook, for the Wilson's barbecue breast, I will baste it with some melted butter. So it's been about an hour and a half, and these breasts have reached an internal of 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap and rest the Wilson's barbecue breast, but there is still one step left for the Jerby Bird. So for this breast, I'm gonna put it in some foil and then put a pat of butter on it with another coat of seasoning. And as it's resting, the butter is gonna melt down and mix together with that seasoning we put on top. And after we slice up this chicken, we are gonna dip it in that butter sauce and it is going to be absolutely incredible. Now, in order to conduct a legitimate experiment, we need a control. So I'm gonna be cooking a chicken breast like Ethan Chubowski in his recipes remastered video. In Ethan's video, he improved Sam the Cooking Guy's grilled chicken recipe using food science. This video and all of Ethan's videos in general are super engaging, informative, and just really high quality content. So make sure to check out his video and also his channel and I'll have them both linked in the description box. So for this control breast, I will be using a brine chicken breast. And once I get it out and dried from the brine, I'm going to butterfly the breast. So in Ethan's video, before he brined his chicken breast, he actually flattened it with a pan so that it would cook more evenly but I totally forgot to do that before I brine, so that's why I'm butterflying here. Then I mix together a half a tablespoon of mayo with some pepper, and then rub that mixture on the chicken breast. Next, I'm gonna heat up my cast iron griddle with medium heat, and then put the chicken on, cooking it for a few minutes on each side until the internal temperature reaches 155. Then I'll let it rest for a few minutes, and the chicken breast is done. Okay, so we have all four of our chicken breasts here, and just FYI, it is like, three o'clock in the morning right now on a Sunday. So I kind of have to be quiet because my family is trying to sleep. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these up and we'll give them all a try. And just FYI, I am trying to cut against the grain of the meat. So I'm gonna be cutting this long ways. Okay, now that they're all cut up, I'm gonna start out with the Ethan chicken because that is our control. So you can see this is very juicy. I have cooked a lot of chicken breast in my life and I will definitely say that by following Ethan's guide, this is the juiciest chicken breast I have ever cooked. So that is a very good sign to start out with. But anyways, let's go ahead and give it a try. Hmm. Definitely taste the saltiness from the brine. It's just a good solid grilled chicken. I think this is great if you're going to meal prep, slice it up, put it in your fridge. You can put it on a salad, make a sandwich. Very solid chicken breast. And also for those of you who are concerned with that half of a tablespoon of mayo, honestly, it really doesn't make that big of a difference because half a tablespoon of mayo is 50 calories. A chicken breast is super lean. So you're only adding 50 calories for all of this chicken and also I actually cut that butterfly breast in half because it wouldn't fit on the cutting board. So basically this amount of chicken, you're only adding 50 calories, which really isn't a lot if you're concerned about that. Okay, let's move on to this highly experimental breast, which is the chicken breast. We tried to cook like a brisket, but then realized we had to do it like a steak. So let's go ahead and just grab a piece of this. Again, very juicy. All right, let's give it a try. Mmm. That is really good. That reminds me of a smoked turkey, but you can definitely taste the Wagyu beef tallow on and in that chicken. And it just gives it such a like, I can't explain it. It's like a, a more fuller mouthfeel that you get when you cook, like when you eat like a red meat. Man, that is really good. I am a huge fan of this. Yeah, I'm not doing this justice in the way that I'm explaining, but it is really good. Like reverse seared chicken. Wow, that is superb. Jeez, look at that. If I ordered chicken breast at a barbecue joint and they gave me this, I would be pleasantly surprised. I'm dead serious, this is really good. You guys have to try this method out. All right, next up is the Wilson's barbecue breast. And I keep saying this, but um, as you can see, this is super juicy. And I don't think it's due to any one of the techniques that I use. I think the common factor in why all of these chicken breasts are juicy is the fact that I cooked them to like 145, 150 and then held them. So 
Whatever method you do cook your chicken breast, I highly recommend that you do that. Do not cook your chicken breast to 165. This is the way you gotta do it. But anyways, let's go ahead and try this Wilson barbecue chicken breast. Okay. So the Wilson chicken tastes a lot more just like a smoked chicken breast, which makes sense because it's just brine, pepper, and then basted with some butter. But again, really good. If you like smoked chicken, try this out. So for the final taste test, I am doing the Jerby breast. And the reason why I saved this for last is because um, Jerby's method is kind of cheating because at the end of it, we're left with this amazing pool of butter and seasoning. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab one of these juicy pieces, as you can see, and we get to dip it in that butter. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so ridiculous. All right, let's try this. That is so unfair. <laughs> that tastes so good. Yeah, that one slaps. Okay, so for my personal taste, if I rank these, I would go Jerby first, my own reverse seared steak chicken breast, followed by Wilson's barbecue chicken breast, and then finally Ethan's chicken breast. And that's not a knock on any of these. Again, these were all really good, especially for Ethan's. You gotta remember, you know, the amount of prep and cook, like I didn't have to start up a wood fire in my massive smoker to make this. This took like 10 minutes to make. So really impressed with this, even though I'm ranking it last. Just didn't have that nice smoke profile that of course I like because I'm a barbecue channel, but give these a try and make your own ranking system. So I think it's safe to say that barbecue can take any food to the next level. So if you're hungry for more barbecue content, then make sure to watch the next video on your screen where I smoke brisket, pork butt, and chicken on my 250 gallon smoker.